Hey guys, I hope you're well. Um, sorry I'm not there again today. Uh, hopefully I'll be back in by Thursday, no doubt I will be. Uh, today we are starting a new chapter or new topic functions. Um, it's a bit of a lead in, I guess, from quadratic functions. Um, it is all year 10. Well, the first part of it is year 10 stuff, so hopefully you remember a little bit in year 10. If not, that's okay. Um, we're going to crack on and just see how we go. Um, so the first part of the lesson is going to be looking at functions versus relations, and the second part of my lesson will be looking at function notation. Uh, I'll try and go as thoroughly as I can without overdoing it, um, but again, hopefully you should remember a little bit of this from last year. Now, I might start with a relation. I'm going to do uh, a Cartesian plane, and hopefully you remember a little bit about this stuff from last year. If you don't, that's okay. Um, so basically, a definition for a relation is simply a set of ordered pairs. Now, you might have forgotten what an ordered pair is, and that is simply a coordinate. Okay, it's just a set of any coordinates. So the minute you have any coordinates on a, a Cartesian plane, it is a relation. It could be a graph. It could be a, just a set of random points, like a scatter graph, for example. Um, but basically, anything on a Cartesian plane is a relation. So what defines then the difference between a relation and a function? Well, let's look at a particular function. I'm going to use one that we looked at plenty in the last couple of weeks, and that's our parabola. We know that is a function, right? So what makes a function a function? So hopefully you might remember the definition from last year. Um, there's a lot of different few definitions we can use, but basically every x coordinate or value coordinate has one sorry my writing is very poor this morning has one y coordinate or every x value has one y value we often call it a one to one relationship now what does that actually actually mean that every x value has one y value well if i look at x equals two for example we can clearly see there's one y value if i look at x equals negative one we have simply uh, one y value if i look at x equals negative four we have one y value now you can have two x coordinates that share the same y value okay like uh, and that's fine but we're saying that every x coordinate only has one y value now, if I look at the right-hand side, that relation, and I look at maybe x equals 3, what you can see, it actually has two y values that are the, uh, two different y values. So that one x coordinate had two different y values, and that's a bit of a problem. We don't want that. Um, so that's why that right-hand side is just a relation, whereas the function is both, right? It's, it's got only got what one y value for every x value now the way we often test this is what we call the vertical line test and what we do is we show that it only cuts it once okay so whenever you have a vertical line test that only cuts a particular graph or a set of coordinates once for the y value then we simply have a function so for example there if I do it in green, I drop my vertical line, we can clearly see we have one intercept. If I drop it through negative one, we have one. No matter where I put my vertical line on that particular graph, it's only ever going to cut it once, therefore it's a function. Whereas on the right-hand side, if I drop that line there, I can find one place where it cuts it twice, and that's all I need. The minute I find one, okay, then it's job done. Now, Potentially, we could look at a couple of examples here. Again, I don't want to spend too much time on this because it's probably going to be uh, stuff that you've done previously. I'm going to look at two different questions. Okay. Um, I might look at a circle. And I might look at an exponential function. So the first one, the circle, is that a function? Well, let's drop a vertical line test. And what do you notice? Bang, bang. It has two intercepts. Therefore, it is simply a relation, okay? Because no matter what that x value is, to those x values that say x equals 2, it has two different y values. And that makes sense uh, in terms of that, that graph. Now, if I look at the right-hand side of the exponential graph, I drop it anywhere and it cuts it once. It is now a function. Now, of course, the exponential, it is both. It's a relation and a function, but the function trumps it, right? It's like the better 
word for it. So we call it a function instead of just a relation. Perfect. Okay, that's the first thing done. Hope that makes sense. Second thing I want to talk about is function notation. Okay, function notation. Now, again, you've done this plenty of times now. I'm hoping you've, we've worked a fair bit this year with function notation already without having done it uh, formally. Uh, let's say we have five, so y equals x plus five, and we have y equals x squared plus two x. Now, if I said to you, find the value of y when x equals two, there's a problem, right? You'd be saying, well, which, which one am I actually subbing into? Is it the left hand or the right hand? Is it both? What are you asking me to do? So function notation is quite handy because what it does, it allows us uh, to call something like f of x, and we maybe use something like g of x, right? And so now I can say, uh, find the value of f of x when x equals 2, or find the value of g of x when x equals, and now you know which one I'm talking about. It also enables us to write that sentence in a much quicker terms. For example, find f of 1, or find g of 3. It's telling us what to sub into f of x, or what to sub into g of x. So for example, I'm going to sub in 1 for the x value, so 1 plus 5 is 6. Or I'm going to sub in the 3, into the second one. And so I can now simplify, okay, to get 15. Um, of course, I could sub numbers in, I could sub letters in, I could sub like a combination of, the, of, two, of both of them. There's lots of things I could ask you to do. Um, of course, if you're doing the, um, the G of X one, be careful if I put like a negative value, like negative four, for example, you need to make sure you have your brackets in there. Um, otherwise, it's going to play havoc, of course, uh, with your with your values. Now, that's pretty straightforward. I might actually divide this up into uh, thirds. Let's say I want you to do f of a. Now, what does that actually mean? Well, the same thing is what f of one means, right? It means sub the x for whatever values in the brackets. In this case, it's an A. So that X, which I've circled, I'm simply going to put an A there and make it A plus five, job done. Can't do much more than that. Okay, that, that way I can't evaluate that. I can only simplify it. Um, I could ask you to do F of A plus one, which means instead of putting the A in, I'm going to put in the A plus one plus five. Now I can simplify to A plus six. If I wanted to be really tricky, in the g of x, I could say g of, um, let's say, a plus 1. Because when I sub the a plus 1 into the g of x, we have x squared, which makes it a plus 1 squared, plus 2 a plus 1. And that means I'm going to have to expand my brackets and simplify. a squared plus 2a plus 1, plus 2a plus 2. And now I can simplify a squared plus 4a plus 3. OK, um, so they, they get a little bit complicated when you start subbing values in like that. Um, I could say things like on the left hand side, I'll do it in red. I could say um, F of A plus G of A. So that means now I'm going to sub A into both of those functions and I'm going to add them together. In fact, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do three F of A, which means I'm going to times the F of A which is going to be a plus 5 by 3. g of a, which will be the a squared plus 2a. And now I'm going to get 3a plus 15 equals, whoops, plus a squared plus 2a. And I'm going to simplify that to make it, I think that's right. Hopefully that's right. Okay, so we can start playing around with things like that. We can chuck in fractions into the x value. We can throw everything in at all. Um, we can get as complicated as we want to be and have a bit of fun. Uh, but generally, function notation, you have done this in year 10, so hopefully you remember it. Um, that's pretty much it. Any problems at all, shout out. Hopefully I'll be back on Thursday. I'm sure I will. Um, apart from that, I hope you guys are well and staying, uh, staying uh, hopefully cold and flu-free. Um, and I'll see you very shortly on. Take it easy.